is it First Amendment uh, rights is my question there. So that is the subject of our poll question. And you can answer, which is more dangerous, Craigslist or guns? Number two, no. No more meeting women on Craigslist, right? Or it just sounds like the Akron case. Speaking of eminent domain, way up at 14,000 feet up in the Colorado mountains, there is a, a cute little cabin way away from anywhere. And the, the officials are going to under a view they say it, it it scars the side of the mountain now if you've ever been in colorado and flown over them you you know you wouldn't be able to see one little cabin no, in the middle no, of them no, they are going to they're going to take this private property under eminent domain in an unprecedented case in the united states usually eminent domain is we're going to bulldoze this street and put up a bunch of uh, buildings that sure. are needed right? right but do you believe that Eminent domain is this part of communism and socialism in the United States, private ownership. These people, for no other reason, this cabin has been there for 60 or 70 years, and they want to come in and take it and bulldoze mm, it see. and allow to the, the, the natural uh, scar on the land to be uh, put back in. So uh, what do you have to say? The University about? of Akron area with all the problems there with the uh, eminent, you know, tearing down this shop and that little small uh At least business. they paid them. Uh, yeah, did uh, they pay them a fair price? Well, they paid yeah. them a market price that the, uh, because the one, um, there was one. There. The one trustee, his son had a building, wow. and others say he doubled his money. I mean, you know, if you bought something for eighty and get one hundred and sixty or uh, whatever, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, sure. But uh, so, and then there's one going on in uh, eminent domain going on in the city over in, um, uh, I think it's in uh, Virginia or around Philadelphia, and they want to. Uh, bolt, there's a whole neighborhood, and there's one uh, building. This guy says it's worth two point five million. They're going to offer him six hundred sixty thousand, take it or leave it. So. Um, I just want to know, is that a trend that's going on, or do you believe in an eminent domain? Do we not have enough dogs in the United States that we need to import them from Sochi, Russia? The Olympic man, the Olympic guy, he, he scooped up a bunch of puppies. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love a bunch of puppies? Mm, and he's, it's going to cost probably $100,000. they got to quarantine and ship and their donations and everything. But I just wonder, do you, could he not use, he the Olympic silver medalist or what have you, Olympic team, he is... Uh, he wanted like four dogs, right? Wasn't he going to bring four dogs? I don't know. <laughs> Initially, it started with four puppies, oh. and now they're talking about all of them. And it says American uh, ski slope style silver medalist Gus Kenworth is arranging for a litter of four puppies to return to the United States for adoption. Um, but the other people are saying that they're uh, this is getting a groundswell of. Uh, do you think it's it, it, it's okay? Right? We should bring. We have plenty of room in America. Or do we need uh, to have his? I think he should use his celebrity. And become a spokesman, not unlike a Bob Barker, Bob or you know, something like that. Do you think that? Do uh, should they? Uh, some people want to fast track and not quarantine the dogs. What do you have to say about that? I say if he's bringing them over here, mm -hmm. it's his prerogative. I mean, he must have fallen in love with them. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. you know, you meet for a reason. He... You meet for a reason. Mm -hmm. At least he didn't meet him on Craigslist. We got that <laughs> exactly. going for it. No, I think well, I'm I'm not taking a I'm not taking pets. a position. I thought it was a very nice uh, yeah uh, thing, but. Um, uh, you know, I just thought that, you know, I don't know. I just brought that up as a, a topic. Uh, the Shroud of Turin was uh, the allegedly the burial cloth of the a body, Jewish yes. Jewish mm -hmm. rite mm -hmm. that covered uh, Jesus. And there's a new there's a new theory about it because they did some carbon dating on it years ago and said it's only about 1100 years of age which conflicts with the fact that it was the cloth that covered yeah. jesus shroud of turn formed by an earthquake scientists say, uh, say face of jesus image caused by neutron emissions now what's interesting about this is if you'll remember the bande acha the big big uh, tsunami that wiped everybody out over there at Chris, day after christmas a couple mm -hmm. years ago the interesting study was that there were virtually no wild animals. Any animal that was well, they not... Left. They left. Yeah. They left because of the mm -hmm. neutrons, yeah. and they know that stuff, right? They felt it. And they did, and they knew it was coming, and uh, they uh, say a lot of things. So they're saying that it's been a source of reverence and intrigue, and it's really reinvigorating this. Some say it's considered a miracle. Others search for a more scientific explanation for its existence. This is a unique situation where you have science, which is usually polar opposite of religion. Mm -hmm. You have that.